so it was in yeah it was muted praise god praise jesus okay uh, the today what we are going to see is on faith you might think that this topic faith but this is the most important topic without faith we can't please god without faith we can't see the promises of god being manifested in our life yesterday i was reading uh, uh, um, you know papa is teaching on faith series so i happened to run the race so i went and started to read the uh, hebrews chapter 12 but when it starts with 12 it speaks about 11 so i went through the whole chapter 11 i'm not going to teach on the whole chapter 11 but uh, okay we can so i can put hebrews chapter 12 was uh, was number 1 from there we can start was number 1 was number 12 will be starting like they say uh, with so great a cloud of witnesses that's how that the verse starts wherefore we we uh, wherefore seeing we also are composed about with so great a cloud of witnesses that's how that chapter starts yeah 12 hebrews chapter 12 1 let it be you can just put it to the aya ah, yeah. let's start therefore seeing we also compose about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god praise jesus praise god so these are the two verses which i read so when i read this two verses it is being shown cloud of witnesses so i had a desire to read the whole chapter 11 when i read the whole chapter 11 i found a word that was a, it was i was questioning that word uh, for example i can go to this verse will be you can see continuously this particular point i didn't understand that point but later holy spirit revealed it uh, hebrews chapter 11 verse number 13 you can see continuously we can see that word coming in that chapter uh, uh, uh hebrews chapter 11 verse number 13 this was uh, it was yeah these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed they were strangers and pilgrims on earth praise god for me the question was these all died in faith not having received the promises that was the, the that was the point that i was uh, you know it, you can see this point coming continuously when you are reading i didn't understand i didn't understand when i read how come uh, all died not having received the particular line that that gave me doubt was not having received the promises not having received it seems to be a negative statement how come you are speaking about faith and this is coming for me also the same question came how come what is the meaning of this they all received the promises abraham waited for isaac and isaac was born it was it is not that isaac was not born they god said i'll give you the promised land moses brought the israelites and they were 40 years they were wandering in the wilderness but at last they reached the promised land the 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 land with milk and honey uh no what period we can see god said the flood so you can minimize i'll explain this not having received the promises no what period god said i'm going to destroy the earth with the flood and he prepared a ark so that you and your family might be saved 
Noah prepared the ark and Noah's family was saved. All their faith, the, the God's promises came to pass. And what is this saying about not having received the promises? And we can see verse number chapter 12, we can see cloud of witnesses through faith, how they obtained the promises. I was stuck in this. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> cloud of witnesses. Yeah. Looking on. Uh, not okay. Praise Jesus. Just so, so can minimize. Minim minimize. Praise God. Is there, uh, is there anyone getting the question that I got? <laughs> but having seen, no, not having received the promises, at one point it was, it was, I was questioning. I didn't understand. I said, God, I, I'm not able to get it. But all of them, when we, when I read through, when I read through chapter 11, I saw all their answers, but all their prayers got answered. They, through faith, they received the promises of God. But at one point, God is telling that not having received the promises, what does that mean? What is the meaning of it? Then when I read, now when I read chapter 12, verse uh, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, that gave me the clue, the author and finisher of our faith. We are thinking that we look into how Abraham operated, how Noah operated, how Moses operated, how David, how David, how all these uh, great prophet prophetess in the old covenant received the promises. How Sarah was blessed when she believed the one who promised is faithful to keep his promise. How they received all these promises, but there was one particular reason for all this. We see, we, we are looking from our aspect. We are looking, okay, I'm, I'm going through this crisis, God, I need an answer. So we look at the cross. When we, when we look at the cross, we say, by the wounds of Jesus Christ, we are blessed. Um, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord, be becoming a curse for us. And he has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. We take the scriptures, we take the promises for, so that our, the, the crisis that we face, the problems that we face, we get an answer for it. But all this, the author and finisher of our faith. What, when I had a question over there, they didn't receive the promises and here God's giving the conclusion, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of the faith. You know, God started to show his love. When God created this mankind, God is good, God is love. The good God, the loving God did not create evil did not create evil. How, how, how did Hebrews chapter 11, uh, 11, 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. How was the world framed? How was everything created? By the word of God. Who was the author? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word became God and he was dwelling among us. He was among us. Without him, nothing is created. He is the author of our faith. He is the creator. Through faith, we believe that the world. How did God create the world? He spoke the word. He spoke, let there be light. They let the, he, he spoke and the world came into existence. Everything that we see that came into existence God by God speaking the word. The things that we see is created from the things that is not seen, that, that is not seen. That is known as the author of our faith. The beautiful thing is, even before that, Ephesians chapter 1, 4, God, I'm saying the author of our faith, the author and the finisher of our faith is Jesus Christ. If today, if we understand this, if uh, I, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help me, to reveal what I understood. If this faith principle is understand, and if we understand this faith principle, we can see God's promises in our life. If we really understand the depth of God's love towards us, we can respond 
in faith, not doubting, not with unbelief, not questioning God, not moved by the circumstances and situation. When our eyes is fixed on God, we can see supernatural manifestation in our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what in Ephesians chapter, even before creating, even before creating the heaven and earth, even before creating the earth, you can say that, even before any creation, God has chosen you and me in Christ, the author of our faith. Ephesians chapter 1, 4. Ephesians chapter 1, 4. Ephesians chapter 1, 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Yeah. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Even before the foundation of the world, God has chosen us in Christ, in him. He has chosen us in Christ even before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. What, is, what does that mean? Even before the foundation, God has chosen. You can minimize it. Even before the foundation, God has chosen us in Christ. Means, I, I didn't understand this scripture before. But when I, once I spoke to my sister, I asked her, how can God choose us even before the foundation? Is it that... Uh, God already knew that Adam would commit sin. Adam, Adam would be rebellious. Did God already knew that this whole mankind will go under curse? If God knew that, why did God allow it? Another question is, if God knew that, then why did God allow it? Then why did God create it? Why didn't God stop it? No, we often doubt God. We often question God's love. Before coming into the world, I used to have lots of doubt. That was to make my point that who is God? There is no God. How can you say Christ is God? That is to, you know, that question was doubt and unbelief. But after coming into Christ, I do ask questions, not as the doubt, but for clarification. I know God is good. I know God is love, but I'm not able to I'm not able to understand when I read certain scripture. It's bringing me doubt, especially when in the old covenant when we see God is punishing with the flood. God is giving the law and making the law being enforced and the punishment and the you know the blessing and the curse based on keeping the law and not keeping the law. When we read all that, there will be law, there used to be lots of questions. God punishing them, the judgment coming upon the Israelites, they being captive under nations. Why God is loving all that? There were so many questions. Before coming into the world, there was a question like children being born, born with a disability, nations where there is war, there is, you know, there is always bloodshed, there is fight, there is quarrel. There is terrorist attack. As if I, I have more sympathy than God has. So I question God. I used to question God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Not understanding the love that he has. One second. One second. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Having lots of questions. But after coming into the world, 
having an intimate relationship, especially listening to the teaching, a past teaching which gave the, the deep understanding on how much the love, especially on the love of God through I'm listening to Papa's teaching only, I understood the Samaritan. It also had the soul and the seed, Samaritan women, the women with the issue of blood. All these teachings gave me, a, you know, really helped me to understand the love that Jesus has for us. Studying the word only, I started to understand. We misunderstood God. We didn't have proper knowledge of God. We thought God like us. You know, uh, with our mindset, we started to view God, but God is love. God is love. This question, he has chosen us in him even before the foundation of the world. When I asked my sister, I will never ever forget the answer that she gave me. You know, that answer was so, so deep. It is not that God, it, I don't know that God knew or not. It is not that God knew that Adam will come. It's, it is not like that. But... God is creating, God is going to create man, mankind in his likeness, in his image. Any case, any time, at any period, if any man moves away from God, is rebellious or is not believing God, he makes a decision to move away from God. Father God already planned to give his only son to redeem the plan of redemption to redeem this mankind from sin. He is going to give a price for that. That is sending his only son as a living sacrifice. The word becoming flesh. This is God's master plan even before creating mankind. When my sister was explaining this to me, she gave a beautiful explanation. Uh, that she, she said that okay, Adam didn't commit, Noah didn't commit, Abraham didn't commit. Everyone of perfect, they are keeping. When it comes to me, I know who am I. I know if I would have made a decision to disobey God, Jesus Christ would have come for me and give, had given his life for me and sacrificed his life for me to redeem me. That is God's love. That is the love that God had on us. That is, the, that is his love for us. The author of our faith, the author and the finisher of our faith. When Adam and Eve committed sin, I'll, I'll go there. Genesis chapter 3. The, 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 God had this master plan, sending his only son. It will not happen just like that. Okay, I had planned, I'll send my son into this world. It, will, it is not like that. The word becoming flesh, God coming as a human like you and me is not an event will take in an instant, everything need to be prophesied. Everything, how he will be born, how, which place he will be born. He should be born to the virgin, a virgin who's very only externally as well as internally. There should be a virgin for the birth of Christ. Everything, everything need to be prophesied. There should be a voice in the wilderness pointing out this is the lamp of God. Even about John the Baptist is being already prophesied in the book of Isaiah. All these need to be prophesied. That's why when Jesus Christ, when he was baptized to the Holy Fire, 40 days he went into the wilderness, he came into the synagogue, he took the scripture and he read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, my God himself has anointed me. And he read it and said, Today, this promise is being fulfilled. Everything should be written. Everything should be prophesied. Without any prophecy, Jesus Christ can't come just like that. He's coming like, like a man, like just like you and me. He's son of God. 100% he is God in his spirit. 100% he is human in flesh. This Jesus need to come into this world. And that is the reason all this event that took place. Even the Noah's flood, why the flood came? The sin was increasing in such a rate that if it is being increasing at a point, there won't be a virgin to give birth to the Messiah, the Christ. When we see about this pandemic and all these um, sudden viruses coming, I think especially during the swine flu, uh, bird flu, we saw that 
birds were being killed in large amount why that 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 uh, that virus should not spread to stop to stop the spread of the viruses they killed it thank you holy spirit god was preparing so that messiah the redeemer the savior of this world would come and save us we don't know what jesus what abba father did for us we don't know the price that he paid for us god so loved this world that he gave his only son and he is the author thank you lord thank you jesus yeah genesis chapter 3 suddenly genesis chapter 3 verse number 15 genesis chapter 3 verse number 15 and i will put enmity between thee and the women and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise the head and thou shall bruise the heel yeah we can see the word between thy seed and her seed her seed means what jesus christ son of god should come into this world and he is the savior he didn't come from adam born of the virgin and this is the plan of redemption when was this spoken the time when adam and eve disobeyed and made the choice made the decision to move away from god and when they lost the glory they when they were separated from god's presence because of their wrong choice mankind was under the slavery known as sin and death when human mankind became slave to sin and death god looking at mankind where mankind as under the slavery of sin and death god need to pay the price jesus christ the messiah need to come to this world praise jesus you can remove sister praise god and this seed this seed that this christ should come in order the christ should come and that is the reason god has even chosen abraham when we read a genesis chapter 15 no genesis chapter 17 was 19 genesis chapter 17 was 19 we can see i make a everlasting covenant i'll establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed here also you can find the word seed seed thereafter hallelujah the answer is in galatians chapter 3 verse 16 galatians chapter 3 verse 16 Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 Now to Abraham and his seed the promise made he said not to seeds but as for many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ which is Christ Praise God now we can come now we can understand the cloud of witnesses and the the hebrews chapter 12 the cloud of witnesses looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith hebrews chapter 12 this god started to reveal the answer for me i had a question not they all received the promises god gave them they all saw the blessing that they needed noah saw the flood noah saw god's hand upon him abraham saw god blessed him god said that i will bless you with isaac abraham saw isaac god asked abraham to give isaac his son abraham with faith he believed that even if though i give my son as a sacrifice god will raise him to that but god stopped abraham and he already replaced aram 
we saw sara who was doubting and who was the one who was doubting to the last and at last she came to the point that the one who promised when the when the men of god met, met them and said next year sara will be having that is the time she renewed her mind she also received the promises we can see all of them receiving their promises in the old covenant but yet that was it is said that not having received the promises all the preparation why why abraham was chosen why the flood came why abraham was chosen why god allowed moses to bring the israelite out of egypt why the israelites were known as the promised people the chosen people why the law was given only to that particular community why was the law enforced why 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 all this happened only for one reason only for one reason messiah the 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 redeemer the redeemer of the whole mankind need to come to save whole mankind from sin and death that is the ultimate goal that is the goal why the why abba father revealed all this in the old covenant but we look through our just from the human point and we see oh they receive the promises we will also receive the promises as a, as a believer in christ what is the purpose of me receiving all the blessing and all the promises there is a race set before us we need to run the race what is the race god had given the disciples go out to the ends of the world and proclaim the gospel we we would have been broken in one point we would have asked for prayer at one for example i'll give my own testimony i i was i'm i'm not a person like this who need to speak god's word i'm not the person who was interested to learn the god's word 2000 2007 it said papa came into our life i was so rebellious till i got till i got married 2011 january i was rebellious i was not ready to accept christ i was putting all all uh, you know that intellectual question towards my sister asking her so many questions questioning her questioning and i say i used to say they are maximizing you they are using you all this is for name sake for money sake for name fame and all this they are doing this and you are go, going behind the preacher and what is this and i was questioning all that i was questioning i was questioning but there came a crisis in my life where my marriage marriage life is a question mark they seem to be there is no future there is no answer there is no hope i was broken the things that i hold on to my education the the our riches our wealth our qualification our intelligence our smartness nothing helped me medicine nothing helped me nothing helped me every dose were locked every dose were shut i came to the point i thought to end up my life at the time i received i had received the gospel i received the truth i received the understanding in the midst of crisis when i looked upon i said god even that time with the doubt and unbelief you know with the desperate art of desperation i need a solution that time who helped me i remember here we can see the cloud of witnesses for me the witness was papa's life how his wife took him to the place where he lost his mind he was behaving like an animal tried to kill his wife with a knife the one the person whom i hated the most most the person who i was not willing to talk the person's voice was i was very much irritated when i was in crisis god reminded me his testimony if he can be healed why can't your situation change that is how i came into the world for selfish purpose my aunt my my am i problem need to be solved if god if you had given the solution i am i am also expecting for the same solution i was also going through something similar to that if i would have not heard his testimony today i don't know today i would run i would i would not be alive i would have ended up my life don't know what would i, I don't know what would the result be praise god but i came to god for my prayers to be answered i came to god for the solution for my life i came to god but when i came when i started to hear the teachings when i started to read the gospel for the first time in my life when i started to hear when i especially after receiving the baptism of the holy spirit having that intimacy with god able to understand the love of god 
In midst of crisis, in midst of difficult situation, God taught me a good lesson to praise him and to worship him. God taught me that his presence was with me all the difficult time. There are, there are, there are three, three, four times. Papa, I never used to speak to Papa often. Only, only when we go to retreats, we can see him. Or in the Zoom sessions when we had that time, we had that, that is the time I used to talk, communicate with him. I never had personal call from Papa, but there are two, three times, especially there were times in my life, no one knew, not even my mom, not even, no one knew. I was very much broken and I, I was, you know, uh, I, I was crying. I was asking God, uh, help me. I, there were times that two, twice or thrice, that moment Papa called me. Even when um, after receiving after receiving the word, after receiving the promises, I started to confess the promises. I started to recite God's promises, but I didn't see the answer. There was a time that I used to ask my sister, you said to come into Christ. I came into God. Your problems should be solved, but my problems is not solved. It, it had become worse and worse. There were times I questioned my sister in, in that, like that, once I thought to end up my life, I was ready to take the rope and end up my life. All those negative thoughts were going in me. Shall I jump from the terrace? All, all, I don't want to speak, all the negative thoughts was happening to end up my life in any way. When I was taking that rope in my hand and I'm, I'm, I was crying and crying and crying, that was the moment my sister called me. And she kept me on hold and she called Papa. She put a conference call. In not the smartphone, the earlier phone that we had before. We used to have the conference call, that, that Nokia phone. Conference, she put the conference and that is the time he taught me, this is a spiritual battle and you're trying to fight it in the flesh. You need to pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Years went by, I saw God's manifestation in my life, the problem that I was facing. I didn't even know when it, when it went. I, I, was, I, I didn't even know when that problem solved. I was not even sure. But in midst of that problem, God taught me a good lesson to be in his presence. Then my birth of my son. Birth itself is a great testimony, not having child for six years and blessed. And after that, he being... Doctor said, as soon as he was born on the third day, they are saying that the baby will die within 24 hours. The author and the finisher of her faith. I started to look up on the cross, initially for the healing of my son by the wounds of Jesus Christ. But as I was meditating, my focus shifted from my son towards Christ, towards the love that he had for us. And I started to realize, who am I, Lord, that you love me so much that you shed your blood for me. There was a battle in my mind. The devil was trying its best. What, you're praying so much, nearly for two weeks. What if your baby dies? There was a time the doctor said that we have tried all our best. The baby's heart rate is completely down. Baby's brain is not functioning. Infection had become high. We tried our best. We can't do anything. Take the baby. If the ventilator is removed, the baby will not survive the next moment. There was a doctor. He had sympathy over me. He had concern over me. A doctor would not speak the fact so much. He spoke the fact in medical field. It is possible to keep a person. He's already there. We can keep him in a survival condition with all this support system. Understand the situation. There was time that, that even in that moment, God gave me, you know, no one knew the battle that I was personally going through in my mind. No one knew. But I learned a good lesson. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. In all this situation, I never opened my mouth and spoke unbelief or doubt. Even though the battle was in my mind, I never ever spoke. There was the time in my, in my mind, the battle was so, so much you're pr praying so much. What if your baby dies? And I, I said, nothing can separate me from the love of God. If baby is alive, I'll carry the baby throughout the world and, and, and show God's glory. 
This is my God who saved my child. If the baby is not there, my baby is in the presence of the God the next moment. Nothing can separate. That is that moment. Holy Spirit reminded me, Paul saying that, to live is for Christ. To die is gain. I'll be in the presence of God. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing can separate me. I will not question why before you forsaken me, you had leave me. I'm not going to question God. Nothing going to separate me. I have, we listen, we, we know about uh, David when his son was dying. He was sick. He was in sackcloth mourning for his son. The moment the child died, he removed the sackcloth. And he started his work. No one knew personally what I was going through in my mind. When I started to fix my eyes on Jesus, on him, on the love that he had for me. You know, our God is a good God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Supernaturally. He gave my son back. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Why I'm saying all this? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. The answer for this, uh, the 13th, not having received the promises, but the 12th was, uh, the Hebrews chapter 12, 2 says, the author and the finisher of our faith. The author and the finisher of our faith. We are looking from our point, but God is looking from his standard. He doesn't want only to save you and me. He wants to save the whole human race. The whole human race was under the bondage known as sin. Sin is the one that is separated mankind. Can I tell you? Yes. Praise Jesus. Anyone came to say anything? Hallelujah. Okay. I think by mistake. Okay. So the author and the finisher, the reason is Christ need to come into this world. He need to deal with the sin. Sin is the reason for all that we face. And Jesus Christ became the living sacrifice. It's okay, sister. No problem. No issue. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And Jesus, and Jesus came and he paid. And the result of sin is what we face. The crisis, the financial problem, the health issue. All that. All that we face is because of sin. The result of sin is the crisis that we face. But the good news is Jesus Christ came and he took the sin. He was made sin for us. And that's why I said, the finisher, he endured the cross with joy, despising the shame. And he said... Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? What is that joy? If only I carried this cross, my people, the whole human race, are under the bondage known as sin. And the cruel master, the, the, the demon, the Satan, who is ruling them, and he's the cruel reader. And what the thing is, Adam and Eve made a choice to obey the voice of Satan. And Satan became the God of this world. And under his authority, when, when he became the God, that is the time infection happened to this world. That is the time the whole human race came under sin. Now Jesus Christ is dealing. Satan had legal rights over humankind to destroy them, to cause them sickness, to destroy. How? Through sin. Now, Jesus Christ came to deal with that sin. And in order to Jesus Christ need to come into this world, all those events in the Old Testament took place. Starting from the period of, even in the Garden of Eden, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, all this period, all these promises, all the law, everything was only for one purpose. The chosen people were chosen only for one reason. God is not a partial God that he wants only to bless the community. He wants to 
have favor with them no that community was chosen because of abraham and that community was chosen because god made a promise with abraham that everlasting covenant that seed to come that is jesus should come that community was given the laws and regulation through moses why the messiah need to come and why should messiah come my messiah jesus Christ should come to become a living sacrifice for you and me because of sin satan had dominion over us satan has authority today what we see difficulties in pregnancy there are abnormalities in pregnancy what why why is the why is all happening why children are being born with the deformities why are children are being born because of curse to have child to have children is a blessing the first thing when god created adam and eve bless them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth to have children is god's blessing in that in that there was no labor pain but because of the disobedience because of the fallen nature eve god said to eve you will bear child with labor pain there will be complication there will be difficulties that is the result of curse but the good news is christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us why don't we focus on that that christ has redeemed us he endured the cross cross is the symbol of curse he embraced the cross the joy that was said if if i carry this cross and i give my life my people will be redeemed from sin and death they will be blessed with all spiritual blessing he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith hallelujah thank you holy spirit he is the author who for the joy that was set apart before him endured the cross despising the shame he was not looking at him what is happening to him jesus christ was stripped naked he was beaten 39 lashes all his skin was torn apart all his bones were exposed he was crowned with the crown that was made up of thorn he was mocked he was insulted he was going through all this from where did he get the strength all his bones were exposed just imagine in the beating every bone is exposed how can a person carry the cross that too with joy his eyes saw you and me his eyes saw you and me he is the author and he is the finisher of the faith messiah christ should come and this plan was executed by abba father it is not just like that everything they were prophet and prophet just in the old covenant they lived they, they lived a life setting them apart they repented they wrote by prophecy that's why we when we say the word prophecy about prophecy i heard recently i heard uh, i heard or i read somewhere that there are nearly 2500 prophecies in the bible and 2000 prophecies are fulfilled the thing is the prophecy the word known as prophecy is not found in any other so and so known as holy book any other book in any other religion or any other any other book is there any prophecy means zero but bible there is nearly 2500 prophecies who is denoting messiah jesus christ the son of god the redeemer the savior of the mankind i learned a good lesson during the time of christ when i was very when there was no solution your married life is a failure your child you don't have even if the child born is born to die in all this situation when i made a choice when i made a decision lord i'm not going to focus a situation that i'm going through my eyes are fixed on you not to receive something initially it started to receive something but as i was going in and pondering in god's word when i started to see what he did for me on the cross i stopped i stopped asking god to give me but god i need to understand i need to be i need to be in your presence i started to praise and learn the good lesson when doctor said you know we can't do we tried our best when the baby that is that night when i called my sister 
praise God. That time I also happened to pop, speak to Papa. It was night at 12.30 I spoke to them. He said this, the spirit of death has no authority, power. Baba, the baby is completely healed. This is the time to praise and rejoice. I learned a good lesson to praise and rejoice from the heart, not for the answer, but praise and rejoice what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. That moment, I really understood how Paul and Silas praised and rejoiced when they kept in the dungeon in the dark area when they were tired. And how did they give praise and worship? That night, I really understood what is the meaning of praise and worship. In midst when Satan is trying his best, he is giving his best shot that we might open our mouth and speak unbelief, that we might doubt God's word. He wants us to doubt. He wants to question our God. He's trying his best and he's giving his biggest shot. And that time when we stand firm in God's presence and we look at the, when we, when we look where we are, what is my identity in Christ Jesus? I am the child of God. No demon has authority over me. When we take the step and we fight the good fight of faith, God will never fail us. I had experienced I'm not telling a story. I'm, ex I'm explaining the experience that many a times I receive lots of God. I'll explain to them the love of God. The thing that I want them to understand, you're, you want your answer. You want your solution. But I'm telling you, don't seek the blessing. Let's seek the blesser. Once you seek the blesser and once you understand the love that God has for you, in this world, till the last breath, there will be some or the other issues that we need to face. Till we go and be with the Father, we will face difficulties. Jesus himself said, but in midst of that, in midst of that, we have the faith of Christ in us. The faith that overcame the world. Christ himself is dwelling in us. And we need to fight the good fight of faith. And we are not supposed to be broken like the world broken. The thing that came to destroy our life, God will turn. What Satan meant to steal, kill, and destroy, God will turn around it for, for, for glory. How did, how did I start to reach out the mothers, those who are having, those who are babies being born in difficult situation in the hospital? I went through that process. I knew what the pain is. I knew the struggle that mother is going through. I, and I also knew how God had redeemed me, how God had saved me, how God kept his promise. I also knew the love of God. So it's easy for me to explain to the mother. I knew that mother, what the mother or the father personally going through that. We need to fight the good fight of faith. In this verse, chapter 11, 12, 1, that is what we see. Wherefore, seeing who also uh, compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every way. What is this? Let us side lay us every way. Cast your cares unto Jesus because he cares for you. Next, next line. And the sin. Deny your flesh. Give, your, give yourself as a living sacrifice. Myself is crucified. My sin nature is already crucified on the cross. It's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. Which do it so easily be set as, I read it again. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily be set us and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us, we are all as a believer in our race. The, the duty of the, every believer is to go to the ends of the world and share the gospel of Christ. I found my purpose in my life. Satan came to steal, kill and destroy, but God came to give life and, life and abundance. And my race is to reach out to the parents, to the couples, who are longing for children, or those who are having difficulty with children, or children having difficulties, they are so and so known as special children. They are more special because they are anointed, blessed, mighty warriors in God's kingdom. Even now I face some challenges, but God is preparing me to reach out to the, to the mothers. 
There are times that I fall and I cry, but at that time God taught me good lesson. Don't it's a it's a fight of faith. You are not supposed to fight the enemy in his field. We are supposed to fight the enemy in our field. That is the eagle and snake. The fight between the eagle and snake. If the eagle fights the snake on the ground, the snake wins. But the same eagle, if it carries the snake to the sky, to its ground, it its field, it will destroy the snake. For us. we are in two realm one is natural sense one is spiritual realm one is natural realm if i try to fight the enemy with my senses with my emotions we will be defeated but if i take the battle and fight it in the spiritual realm use the sword of the spirit the word of god we will defeat him praying in tongues he will be confused he is expecting us to cry to mourn to question to complain to grumble in the crisis in midst of crisis he is waiting for us to do that but when i am not focusing on the situation and my eyes are fixed let run the race how can i run the race my eyes are fixed on jesus and i started to run the race when our eyes are fixed on jesus taking the sword of the spirit and destroy the works of the enemy no weapons formed against me shall prosper if there is a difficulty with your child say my child has the mind of christ spirit of the lord jesus christ is upon my son my daughter don't give up might be your son or daughter in like a prodigal son they are lost in the world the prodigal son came back keep on confessing the seeds that we sow will not go void the words that are spoken the promises of god our part is we need to water it means i need to give thanks and praise and rejoice saying that it has already manifested and with patience that is patience bamboo tree is a good example for that when the bamboo tree is planted it will take 3 to 3 years or 4 years for the shoot to come but the farmer need to water it with patience but once it sprouts it will grow to a high speed to the highest length our to, our job is to plant the seed in each in which area we are and we need to run the good and we need to run the race that is set before us planting the seed believing that it is already done in Christ Jesus hallelujah Jesus Christ is the author and the finish he is finished he has finished the good news is when we believe in Christ we have received the same faith of Christ Hebrews chapter 12 no 3 this Romans chapter 12 the measure of faith we have received the same faith of Christ praise Jesus any questions to ask nothing to ask hallelujah thank you holy spirit thank you jesus am i audible yes 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 praise god praise jesus praise god hope it's clear yes yes it is clear Jesus. Yesterday I had a question, but God answered in Romans chapter twelve too. All that happened in the old covenant is only for one purpose: Messiah, Christ should come. Um, one more thing, I learn. Uh, I'll, I'll. Our race is to run, and uh, the duty of the born again believers is not to live a selfish life. we receive the answer we receive the blessing but god wants us to reach out to the ends of the world to this dark world his word is the light his gospel is the light we need to carry that light to the world that is the race that we are there for we are not going to take the riches we are not going to take the wealth we are not going to take the money but we take the soul and that is the race that is set up for us 
in which area once we 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 faced hard time difficulties we struggled we cried <laughs> that area where god couldn't give up who was there who supernaturally answered our prayers our answers and he has blessed us i experienced it so our duty is to go out and reach out especially in that area those who are going through the crisis and that is the race set before us for every believer how many souls am i going to take to the kingdom of god praise jesus thank you lord thank you jesus thank you lord father god most of the couple those who are longing for children might be watching this teaching now or in the future parents those who are having babies who were born premature or born having some issue hospitalized surgery whatever might be mother parents those who are having child with special need difficulty in learning difficulties in studies parents of grown up children who are lost in the world some children going through pressure depressed or in have bad habit bad behavior bad friendship children facing difficulties in their career in their studies i dedicate all these parents lord the anointing that i received i release the same anointing upon this parents instead of them seeking the blessing blessing let their heart seek for you lord they are not broken parents they are not defeated parents they are anointed parents and their children are mighty warriors for god's kingdom god your word says you choose the foolish the world will say is a foolish is a fit for nothing but god you have chosen them to despise to shame the wise your glory is revealed in them i release the anointing my son received at least the same anointing on the baby i was childless for 6 years god you had blessed my womb i release the same blessing upon the mother who's watching the couple those who are watching your womb is blessed but this period is not to sit and cry and beg and ask this is the period to have an intimacy with god to have an intimate relationship with god it's abraham's blessing is upon us your generation are like like the stars your anointed mother anointed father the descendant of abraham to bring forth anointed not like the not like other parents in the world sending our child putting our child into a race you should become rich you should become wealthy you should live a selfish life that is not the purpose i train my child i am going to train my child for god's kingdom for god's purpose for his glory god as a parent we ask wisdom lord how to train our children thank you lord papa often used to say my mother didn't see the transformation that took place in me for 32 32 years i was a prodigal son my mother didn't see me but she was keeping on and praying for me often he used to say my mother is rejoicing in heaven looking at me going out and reach if that prodigal son can go out and reach out why can't your son or daughter they are you look don't look what the enemy is doing lord don't look at present what your child is going through look at the finished works of jesus christ look your child as a mighty warrior standing in the pulpit and proclaiming the gospel touching souls the lost souls thank you lord thank you jesus for this mighty ministry lord not for a selfish purpose lord let your word let your gospel be spread lord thank you for this anointed blessed children lord how much ya la dara kaya shibara dara we also pray for the orphans orphan babies orphan children 
You are the father for the fatherless. You are the father and mother for the for the children who are orphaned. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all your precious promises. We take a step to run the race that's set before us to reach out. to those who are broke, to share the love that we receive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise Jesus. So we can meet tomorrow. Tomorrow at least at 11, I'll try to start. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Jesus. Thank, you. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God.